Oh boy, this is a different view than what I'm normally at. So it's kind of a messy view here, but these are like, you know, it's at my, the eBay area. So it's a, it's a constant state of disarray and a mess. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday. It's Wednesday here, but it's Thursday for you. I cannot hear out of either one of my ears so it's going to be an interesting today. And fun fact, I uh, didn't put any mascara on. So hopefully my glasses will cover it a little bit. So it's going to be a day. I have two sales today. I have a sale with Patrick, Trusty Huckster Mercantile at 1 o'clock. And I have a sale with Yvonne, Thrifty Rich, on her channel at 5 o'clock. So I hope that you were able to come to those. Um, so I, I got everything ready for those sales um, but I do, ha you know what I thought I would do? You know, I'm going to tell you, I, I think maybe I've sold something on eBay. I need to look. If I did, it hasn't been much. I haven't been listing anything on eBay. Therefore, not a lot gets sold on eBay because you have to keep eBay active. And with me being sick and just not really feeling up to par, I've kind of let it go to the wayside. So I'll check on there and see if we even have any of that to talk about. And um, I forgot to mention to Dad that I wanted to go through another one of his boxes. So we will do that next week. Uh, he has a little box right there. So we will do that for next week's vlog. But today, I thought maybe, it's been a long time since we've done this, but I thought maybe we'd do a good old-fashioned haul as part of this video. I haven't done one in a very long time. And I think I've talked, I've talked, I've talked about it before how as when I'm shopping I typically will show you what I'm buying it just saves me some time but I did go into the antique mall yesterday and I didn't film so I did buy some really cool things that I ugh, I really love so um, we'll just do it we'll, we'll make that part of today's video and I have a couple things that I need to ship from live sales so again it's a vlog it's just kind of uh, all-encompassing my uh wednesday and so let's go ahead what should we do for well let's go ahead and check ebay let's check the sad state of my ebay sales this week and um that's where we'll start oh i brought some cheese to the shop so i'm gonna put that in my little refrigerator or as i'm brewing my coffee and this will be well some of this will be for lunch today okay so i'm sitting over here looking at my ebay sales and we're not even going to talk about it honestly <laughs> because it's not good so, we will save eBay for another week. Because it's not good. And honestly, I didn't list. I didn't list. And I had a lot of, like, free shipping items. So, I got charged a lot um, for the amount of things that I sold. And we're just going to keep it at that. So, y'all don't want to learn this week from me on eBay. Mm-mm. No. Again, there are YouTube channels that are very good at dis at talking about eBay. Um, Rally Roots, The Niche Lady, The Nurse Flipper, um, Yvonne Th Thrifty Rich. Uh, go watch their videos on YouTube, on eBay because I am not good at eBay selling. I'm good at, at doing live sales. That's where my niche is. So that's where we're. That's what we're gonna talk about. At least this week. I mean, once eBay, once I start doing a little bit better on eBay, we'll discuss it. But right now, we're not going to. So let's go ahead and do this haul video. See it right up there? I got it all set up. So let's walk over there and let's let's do the haul real quick. Oh boy, this is a different view than what I'm normally at. So it's kind of a messy view here, but these are like, you know, it's at my, the eBay area. So it's a it's a constant state of disarray and a mess. So, um, I've got some cool things that I'm going to show you. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Okay, well, first of all, before I, before I show you, these are items from one of my very, very favorite places, Riverside Arts Decor and More. Um, it's, it's just, it's my favorite. It really, really is. And I go in there every week and you know what? I go in there every week and you know what else? 
It's literally changed every week. Like the booths are really good about going in there and manning their booth. So kudos to Lisa who who runs a tight ship and ma and you know she makes sure that they, she lets them know that, you know you need to you know change things up a little bit. So good job and it's it's a wonderful place. So if you're down in the Bedford area, come on in and check them out. I know sometimes people say, "Misty, you're giving, you're giving away your places where you go." You know what? Sure I am because you know I want you to go in and I want you to go in and I want you to shop from these small businesses. I go shopping every week. There's plenty of stuff out there for me to find. So make sure that you do go in and you shop all of these small antique malls and vendors and um, support them in your community. So absolutely, you go in shop where I shop and I I endorse it. So anyway, um, th the first thing I'm going to show, I, I didn't get these the first time I went in there and saw them. But I got them yesterday when I went in, and they are these crocheted bunnies. And part of me thinks I want to keep them, but I'm, I'm probably not. But somebody has made these with their own little hands, and I think that they're adorable. I like how this one's got, like, its head just, like, tilted a little bit, and this one's, like, got, its, well, their little arms. Well, I guess they're not poseable. That's the way that she'd sewn her their arms on. So they're posed in such a cute little way. And they got little skirts on. They got their little tails. They're adorable. The little strings are still on here, but I don't know if I'm going to sell these or if I'm going to keep them or what I'm going to do, but I love them. So we're going to set those aside. I did get some books. We'll go over the books um, at the last part because I just love the books so much. And um, a few of these books I did not get from Riverside. I did get them when I was in Tennessee. But it is a place that I didn't film at, so I thought I'd just go ahead and show you. So I'll do the books here momentarily. All right, the next item. And the price tags are off, and I can't... I, I want to say on everything other than some of the books that I'm going to show you, I think I might have spent like 60 some dollars. I think. I can't quite remember. I've already filed the receipt away. These little cuties are... I don't know if I'm going to keep these as well. A little thing, though, um, I have three or four tubs that I pulled down, well, that Mark pulled down from my attic full of Easter and spring decor. So I'm going to be going through those. Um, in fact, I might bring them here and we might, I might go through them. I might, I might film going through them here because I cannot keep four bins. Remember, Misty's trying to not buy a bunch of stuff because Misty eventually wants to live in an RV the majority of the time. So I got to sell some of this stuff, but these are just adorable. I don't have these and I'll show you using one of the books here that they are these little plastic. Well, maybe I'll show you stand up. This is your time to be on camera. Little bear, little plastic stand up, uh, little critters. I think you're a pig bear, bear or pig. You are a duck. But they are adorable, and they're riding little, little bikes. So they're perfect for a really fun, kitschy spring display. They do have their little stands attached to them, so that's why I really liked them. This, now, the little pig bear is missing his bow, but the duck still has theirs intact. I don't know if these were, if they were just maybe made for a cake, possibly. I don't know, but I loved them. So the jury is still out on those as well. Now, I'm looking at it right now. I have been compiling a big horde of bumblebee things because I'm wanting to have like a spring, a summer sale. Sometimes I do that. I'll like group things up on my shelves over there to, um, you know, for upcoming sales. So I already have several of these. All right. So I, I these will be coming. The little honey pot. This one is uh, made in Japan, but I don't have any, several of these, the sugar bowl that matches it. Now it doesn't have the spoon. You can see it says it's made in Japan. It, and they are in pristine condition. A lot of times you find them and the little, um, the bee's wings are chipped or dinged or they got a little bit of a boober on them somewhere. But I have not seen the little round sugar bowl and I think that it is adorable. And it almost looks like a little beehive. Ooh, there you go. Looks like a little beehive with a little bees all the way around it. So very cute for a display. 
So those will be coming up in a, in a soon in a live sale very soon. These little guys I have looked at every time I've gone in. They're made by Holt Howard. It is kind of it isn't the most resale value thing that Holt Howard had had made, and I don't know why because they're very fun and kitschy. But when I've sold these pieces in the past, they've not commandeered as as much of a of a profit as far as some of his other items. But these are the little classic, the Red Rooster, um, Holt Howard salt and pepper shakers. He did mugs. He did a whole plate line and stuff of these. These are in excellent condition. A lot of times you will find them and they'll have repairs on them. There are no repairs on these guys. There's no little boobers on them. There's no chips. They do have their original stoppers. The paper label is mo mainly missing. It's barely hanging on there. So I went ahead and got them because I thought that with the seasons changing, they, they would be good in a spring display. So I bought them. That was the day that I bought them in there. And honestly, everything, everything but, I think a couple, everything but one thing came from one booth. You know that booth. My favorite booth. All right, this little guy is a little Japan. I'm kind of thinking it looks a little UNESCO, but I'm not quite sure. But he is in excellent condition. Again, he's got the remnants of the price tag. I will take all those off. But he's just a little fuzzy bunny. Look at him with his little fuzzy tail and his little fuzzy floof. I can't resist these. And he is in really nice condition. He has a Japan sticker there. He does have, um, I think that he, he has a very UNESCO looking face to me with these little bunnies. Lots of beautiful crazing, which I really love. But he's in excellent condition. I love these guys. You can just tuck them in. Just tuck one in a little Easter display. This was a thing that I did not get from my favorite booth, but this little guy, and for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of who made these. They are an American-made pottery. It's a cat, and I believe it's made in California. I will say that. But look at him. Now, in, tucked inside here are cotton balls. I'm not going to pull them out right there, but inside his cavity are cotton balls. Look at his little face. He's a little pottery cat, and it's like he's playing, like if you, let me see if I can pull one out, just so we can, I can show you what I think that he's doing. Okay, so if you've got your cotton ball just kind of stuck in there, he's like playing with it with his little hand right there. Boop, boop, boop. Isn't that cute? Remember the days when they had colored cotton balls and colored toilet paper? I don't know why that just popped into my head, but it did. But that would have been really cute with this little guy. Look at his little eyes. I just, I, oh, he's got a little yellow bow on the back. So I passed you up a lot, but I decided to get you yesterday. I did, I did. Okay, this is something that, you know, I think maybe, some people would look at this and be like, well, that's garbage. Well, actually, a lot of people might think a lot of the things that I like is just straight up garbage. But I don't. I love it. And I, I paid good money. I paid up for this. I did. I can't remember how much it was, but I paid up for it. And I love it. I'm going to show it to you now. Okay? Are you ready? It's a can. A patio torch fuel. First of all, look at the graphics on there. There is their patio fuel. Look, they're having a party. They've got their party clothes on. She's got a record in her hand. And even the children get, get to attend. And then you flip it over on the other side and it's more of their party. Look at their lawn chairs. They're having a party on their patio. I think the lady in the pink dress is like, yeah, right. I think this lady's being pretty boastful. And she's just like, uh-huh, sure. And that, that little kid's like, give me more lemonade, Dad. But this is a metal can. It's rusty and crusty on the top. It's rusty and crusty on the bottom. But the label itself is actually in really good condition. And this, it's empty. But it says at one time it contains citronella. Um, Empire patio torch fuel for use in all types of outdoor torches. It's pleasantly scented. There is no odor of coil, coal oil. 
It's economical, filling with your torch will last many hours and provide pleasant illumination. The fuel burns with a soft, smokeless glow, giving off a non-offensive odor of centronella. Patio torch fuel. It's great. I think it says, uh, oh, no, it didn't on the other side talks about it, it's combustible, but it's, you know, it is, um, it's a, it's a can that was meant to be thrown away, but I am so glad that somebody, somebody kept it and I love it. And I think for a spring and summer display, that's going to be pretty nice. I love that stuff. I know that it's weird and I know that not everybody understands it, but. Oh, and that was made in hooker. Hooker. It was a hooker hooker glass. Hooker glass and paint, Chicago, Illinois. Well, good job. Good job, hooker. You made a good can. All right, so this next little guy is adorable. Oh, if I can. Oh, here's some scissors. You know. I'm not going to, like, I know that I like to, I haven't done a haul in a very long time, but when you do, when I'm doing a haul, I like it to be all spread out and open, but, so I, it's kind of really bugging me that I left the tags on these, but it is what it is. We'll, we'll get through it, but this little cutie, oh, this is Beatrice Potter. This is um, 1954. This is an older one. Well, I don't know that this is an older one. Just to be quite honest, it's a copyright. The copyright is 1954. So I don't know when this one came out, but it is made in Beswick, England. Beatrice Popper, Miss Moppet. And every time I hear Moppet, I think of Nate. Um, there you go. But look, look at little Miss Moppet. She's a little cat. What are you holding? A blanket? Oh no, oh yeah, there's a little, ma a little mouse right there. What's little Moppet? And it's just a little cute little kitty cat. And there is the bottom. So I thought that she was adorable. And I love her colors. She's a little tiger cat. You're cute. You are cute. And then, oh man, I'm going to cut the tags off because it's driving me nuts. But anthropomorphic. We love it. We love it. Well, most of us. Well, maybe not most of us, but I do. So I got these two little cuties. They're little cucumbers, I think. I think that they're cucumbers. I'm going to use this book again. They are little cucumber salt and pepper shakers in their jammies. And they're waving hi. Hi. What are the cucumbers in our pajamas? Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Look at that. Look at that profile. Boing. I think that, are you an eggplant? If you were an eggplant, you'd be purple. But I think that you are a cucumber or a squash. We don't know. Look at that face. And he's in his little jammies. Oh my word. Original stopper, original stopper. Oh, stand up there, little fella. Adorable, in perfect condition. She has a couple other anthropomorphic salt pepper shakers. And when I go in next week, I'm probably going to get them because I'm going to, I will do this. I will lay in bed at night and I'll think about them. This was the first thing I put in my cart yesterday and it is made by Federal Glass. Um, and it is a little apothecary jar. I've sold these before. It has this like amoeba or boomerang pattern on it. Sometimes they'll have a little bit of gold trim on them. This one does not, but it does have the lid. So great thing to put in your bathroom, again, for cotton balls, or you could put maybe straws. Maybe you could keep straws in this too for your kitchen. I don't know, but I really love the design. So that was, that. was this was the first thing that went into my cart when I saw it. If you want to see something weird, this is weird. I have no idea. I tried looking this up and I couldn't find it. I do think that it is older, like 70s older. I know that does no offense, but I mean, like, it's not like modern, modern, but it's just odd and it is glass and it's this creature. But the thing that made me think that it was an older piece is just the styling of its legs and that the, just like kind of the, the pitting and the age of the metal. 
don't know if you can, if that's going to pick up, but you can kind of see sometimes, and he stands up just great, but I think he's some sort of a little bird creature, but he is blown glass. You can see there on the bottom, he is blown glass and he has these applied, well, they're kind of, well, they're interesting. I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but they're red on the outside and then a middle uh, like caning of blue and it's got this fun bumpy texture with a little beak oh a bird I think isn't that weird look at his profile it's like a little alien bird no mouth other than that's his beak or that's his nose I don't know but I I, I loved it and I I, I knew that somebody out there will like him too so he's a little weird weird bird bird alien guy this little guy i sold his brother yesterday but here we have another little cricket now these are and this is an amazing find these are highly collectible they are little cricket bug men he is holding up his knees the one i sold yesterday was a figural uh, on a um a butterfly and I sold him for $60. So they are, they're really pretty collectible. He has a sweet little, whoops, where's your face, buddy? There you, sweet little face. Sometimes they have little faces like, oh, but he has a cute little face. So, and he has a little red dot on the back of his suit. This next item is, I'm going to take these home and I'm going to see if I want them, but if not, they're going to be for sale, but it's a set of three. Normally there would have been a set of four and there's no, well, let me look in the lid because sometimes you can find the maker in the lid. There's no maker on them at all. No, but they're a set of canisters. I believe the flower one is missing, but this color, oh, you match my earrings canister. Good for you. The color is amazing. And you can see this one has like a little trophy. And it says sugar. And then the next size is coffee. And then we have tea. So I might keep these. I'm going to take them home. They do nest. You know, they stack one inside another, which is nice if you if I did sell them for shipping purposes. But um, I'm going to take them home and see if I can use them somewhere. Because that color is my jam. That, and, that color and this color. Which they don't look really good together, but I don't care. Those are, those are my colors. Okay. Now... This next thing, or we're already, we're already 19 minutes into this haul. This is good. My my vlog videos on Thursdays are longer. They are. I know sometimes you'll all like a longer video and sometimes you don't, but Thursday's videos are tend to be a little bit longer because honestly, I really enjoy them a lot more than any other video because I feel like I'm just sitting here talking. Just sitting here talking to y'all. So I really like the vlog videos. So they're a little bit longer. This set is made by Freeman McFarlane out of El Monte, California. I have sold these before, but I have never found the complete set. And they are the purple cows. And they are, st they're a little stoned. Cause the, the, she's been working ho her whole life, pouring your cream out of your, out of her body. She's the creamer. She does have her Japan sticker and you put your cream on the inside. Now she does have a couple little hairline cracks up on her mouth. She's been working hard her whole life. The gold is a lot of times rubbed away and it's very good in this, in this situation. So we've got the creamer. She's bisque. I don't like to touch her, but she's got that bisky feel. And then I'm going to save the best piece for last. But there's the creamer. We got the salt and pepper shakers too. The salt and pepper shakers are in excellent condition. They do not have their stoppers. But I would not recommend using these as salt and pepper shakers. I would just use them as, you know, part of the display. This is the, she, this one's the good, this one's my favorite. She is the sugar bowl. And she is not that happy about it. Why do I have to be the sugar bowl? But you know what, girl? 
cheer up because you're complete. You got your um, top and your spoon. Never do I find the top and the spoon on you. And she's a beautiful um, glazed pink on the inside. Actually, so is the, the creamer is too, but never. So you need to be proud, girl, because you are pretty fabulous. And there you can see the little divot where the spoon goes. Purple Cows, made by Freeman McFarland in El Monte, California. I love them. Love, love them. They'll be available in a live sale very soon. And in fact, most of the, I mean, if you see anything you are interested in, you can send me an email. And I'll, I'll, if I'm selling it, I'll give you a price. But a lot of these things are going to be available in an upcoming live sale or in my house. Okay, so those are all like the thing things. And now we're going to get to the books and the ephemera. The little book that I've been using is called Eight Fairy Tales by, and it's edited by Waddy Piper, but I loved the graphic on the front. Um, this one, I paid $4 for this book. It is copyright, the latest copyright is 1938, and it is, it's the true story of Peter Pan. The illustrations, while in black and white, are still very, very nice, I think. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize there's, well, here we go. What did I know? Misty, what? You don't know anything, Misty. I didn't look at it all the way through because sometimes I don't do that. I get really excited, but there are color pages or color illustrations as well. So we've got um, Tom Whittington, I think, or what was his name? Was it Tom? Oh, we have, oh ooh. well, before we get to Tom, look at that. Cinderella, Cinderella, with her wicked stepmother. No, I think that's not, that's like the fairy godmother with her. She doesn't look like, she looks like the wicked, she looks like a witch. Dick Whittington, not Tom. And then Jack of the Beanstalk, uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Puss and Boots. Look at that. That's great. I love this book. I love it even more. What's the other story? Now I'm invested to know what the... The Three Bears. The book itself is in excellent condition. The binding is still nice and strong. And then Tom Thumb. Riding a rat. He's riding a rat. So that's pretty fascinating. Oh my gosh, look at the little fairies. Okay, well that's pretty fabulous. So eight fairy, well that would make sense, Misty, that there's eight fairy tales in this book, since that is the title. All right, this book I paid $3.54. Sometimes I just purely go on the title. I can hear the title in my head. I can, and I go for the illustrations, and I love this illustration. This is a Wonder Books, um, and this, which is, yeah, Wonder Books. It's, um, let Papa sleep, and those little bunnies are getting a scolding. Look, they cannot blow their horn nor play their drum. Look, at, he is really upset about his scolding. There you go. Look at that face. And she doesn't look like she's yelling at him too bad, but. Let Papa sleep. But it has just really fun illustrations in here, too. We got Pip and Chip. Papa was fast asleep in bed. What can we play that is quiet? Let's look for a quiet thing. And it's just their adventures going and looking for quiet things that they can play with. It's just cute. Um, I wonder. I'm going to look. Oh, then they made, they must have made a big mess because they're gonna get in trouble for that too. They made it. They made a big mess. And Papa's up and smoking his he's smoking his pipe. Um, so this is copyright 1963. These books are meant to help the young reader discover that what a delight delightful experience reading can be. The stories are such fun that they urge the child to try his new reading skills. They are so easy to read that they encourage and strengthen him as a reader. 
him as a reader, not her, just him. 1963. And then I get, I did get these. Well, I got this golden book here just because it's it's a little bunny when Buddy grows up. And I know that you can tell the date. Well, it's got a barcode on it, so it's not going to be. I did pay $3 for this one. Um, and typically what I do with my little golden books is I will bundle them. I'm not going to sell them individually and singly because I buy a lot of them. And to me, I think it's you as a buyer will get a better deal if you are buying them as a bundle instead of um, individually. This one, the copyright date on this particular one is 1955, but that's not when this book was published because it does have a barcode on it. So it was published out in the 1970s or beyond. So when Bunny grows up, this one also has a barcode on the front, but honestly, and I paid $2 for this one, but I bought it simply for the cover because these skunks are pissed. All of them. It's time for bed. But so, oh, but look at them. What on earth happened to them? She is ready for a revolution. Oh, no, she's just holding mama's hand. I thought she had her hand up in the air like that. But time for bed. But they all look so mad all of the time. I don't know. I just, I, they're, and they're skunks. Look, they're all so mad. <laughs> what is going on? That one's sleeping in the bathtub. I mean, even in like a loving embrace, they're, they're, they're angry. I don't know. I just, I, I liked it. So I got that one. And then this one has a little bit of wear on the front cover it is um, the Dick and Jane stories. This is one of the original ones. You can see there it has a little tear up there. Probably there was a price sticker or something on it. But this is an Elson Gray, Dick and Jane, 1934. And it has a sticker on the inside that the date of purchase was 1937 from the textbook library in South Dakota. But Dick and Jane and Baby... But the, these are highly sought after by um, children's book collectors. But the illustrations are are just, they're marvelous. Dick, Jane, and Baby. I, don't, I didn't check to see if there were any holiday. I don't think that there is, but... It's a fabulous, fabulous book. It has the word list in the back. So this was one of the original Dick and Jane books. Love that. I want to say I paid like maybe $5 for it or so. This book, I paid $5 for this book. It's just so fun, but it's a cuddly picture book. Pluto, right? That's Pluto. Big Pictures for Little Tots. This was made by Lowe. I don't know that it's... Um, I don't know that it is endorsed or licensed through Disney. But the illustrations are amazing. This is dated 1961. James and Jonathan printed in the USA. There's Timmy Tiger. Mr. Chick. He steps out. Timmy Tiger is... Grr, I'm a tiger. Oh, look at Kitty Buttons. Look at Kitty Buttons. And then we've got Peter Panda. Oh, my gosh. Miss Cat. No, Miss Kit and Squeaky. Mr. Raccoon and Susie Squirrel. I, I mean, come on. I couldn't resist. Billy Bear. He has all sorts of thingamajigs. In, and he's got roller skates on. And Danny Duck. Baby Elephant, and Sammy Seal. I'm reading to you right now. This is, I can read this as plenty of time. Funny Bunny and Fluffy Chicks, Porky Pig Goes to Market. What are you buying, Porky Pig? Oats and soda. And look at his little pocketbook. Mm, and a little book of himself. Perky Pelican and a Spotted Leper. Fun, 
for you. And then we've got a random Pluto on the back. So it's so bizarre that there's Pluto on here. I loved it. It's amazing. So I paid $5 for it. And it was worth every penny. I love it. Love it. This book, man, I paid $9 for this book. And let me just show you, too, that the antique booth owner and my favorite antique booth, she uses Post-it notes and puts them on the inside of her books. She does not put stickers on the outside of the cover, nor does she write in pen or anything. She uses Post-it notes. She's a smart lady. All right, so this is one of my favorite children's um, illustrators. This is made by Whitman, which is who Ruthie Newton, she did all of her illustrations through this one company. I did just recently find that out. So thank you to Enamor Amy. She had mentioned that and I did a little bit of research and that is true. This is Peter Rabbit by illustrations by Ruthie Newton. And I love that the that it's all stitched together. Now, there are some condition issues with this, but I have bought these in much worse condition. Now, the back of it has some condition issues here on the back side. But this is a story of Peter Rabbit, illustrated by Ruthie Newton. Now, some of the pages on the inside as well do, like, the, that one has, like, a little bit of crayon coloring. But the pictures and the illustrations are vibrant and, and fun and just classic Ruth E. Newton. The Ruth E. Newton, um, I collect the squeakers that she that she um, that's based off of her characters. Honestly, the condition is questionable on on a few of the pages, but the majority of the pages are great, and the book is all still intact. It's just basically this this back page that has a little some issues there, but oh, I love this. Okay, so these books, oh my gosh, these are heavy. So, um, I am going to, I don't know if I'm going to sell these in a live sale, honestly, if I'm, or if I'm going to put them on eBay, but these I found in Tennessee, and I paid, oh, I got to get to book one, $12 for the entire set. There are six of them, and they are the... Um, Stories of Childhood, the Child's World book. These are amazing. They are in excellent condition. They don't even feel like they've even been looked through. They are 1959 Stories of Childhood. And the illustrations are both in color and in black and white. So these are a child's encyclopedia of stories and tales and legends. Oh my gosh, look at the little, um, the three little bears. Now, these on eBay, I have seen them sell for a set of five, I think, for a over $100. So, we have nature stories. Look at the little deer right there. And like I said, we've got book one. I have them all upside down. Let me show you them like this because... While the books themselves are amazing just because of what is inside of them, they're kind of heavy. Let me see if I can do this. The display value on these are amazing. You can see how colorful the binding is. And like I said, I do have books one through six. And we have book one was Stories of Childhood. Book two is People and Great Deeds. We've got Johnny Appleseed and Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Paul Bunyan, St. Francis of Assai. And then book three is Plant and Animal Ways. Book four is The World and Its Wonders. Book five is Countries and Their Children. And book, wait, that was book, yeah, book five, book, um, Six is Mother's Guide and Index, which is, what does that mean? Oh, it's like how to, like, overcoming fear. Persistent or stubborn, the discontented child, the whiner. Elsa is a whiner. Whenever she is denied permission to do something she wishes to do, she refuses to accept, 
accept her mother's decision. And at no time is the refusal an open defiance. Instead, it takes the form of begging and teasing and nagging, which there is no end until the mother gives in to her daughter's wishes. Okay, the show off. We know a few of those. The, we got jealousy. We know a few of those too. Temper tantrums. Oh, wow. That baby. So this is like how to handle your, your whiny child. Well, that's an interesting. Good manners. Hearts like doors will open with ease to very, very little keys. And don't forget that two of these are thank you, sir, and if you please. The mother's guide, because only the mother can rear the children back in those days. So I don't know. I thought those were amazing. And I, I still don't know if I'm going to sell them on eBay or if I'm going to offer them in a live sale. But just know that they are going to be pricey because they are worth it. Then the condition of them is amazing. And I'm not splitting them up. I'm selling them as a complete set. All right. And so the next few items, again, I know that this is long. But it is what it is. We're already at 39 minutes, and that's just the whole portion of the video. Okay, so I got these paper dolls. I don't even know what all is in here. I just, I love, oh, there's a, a sock in there. But here we have the paper doll herself. And she's like cut out of like what almost looks like a cereal box type stuff. And then she's got all kinds of finery in here and dresses and they're all, like, these are also cardstock, but then there's also some, like, traditional paper. Ooh, look at, look at that get up. So, yeah, paper dolls. Just a, a random set of different kinds. And there are a lot, lots of pieces in here. I mean, it's just overflowing. And they all have an initial of ST. on the back. I always forget that my camera screen is right there. Oh, look at this. Here's her little outfit and she's got a little baton. Da, 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 da. Well, that's fun. So there we go. That is one set of paper dolls. And then <laughs> I got this one. This is made by Whitman, but it's, you ready? Secret Sue. Not to be confused with baby secret. This is secret Sue paper dolls. It's the authorized edition. Authorized. 1967 by Cherry and Shacklefield Creations, Whitman Publishing. So there is the inside. Secret Sue is still there. Secret Sue. Punch out the glasses that belong to Sue. Attach to a string, and you can be secret too. I don't know if the glasses are still in here. Let's let's see. There are a lot of pieces in here, though. A lot of Sue's stuff. We've got some of her dress, her her clothes. Lot. Oh, look at that. That's cute, Sue. Sue, you got some cute clothes. So, secret Sue's friend is no longer here. She decided she was done uh, being a secret for Sue, and she went out on her own. I don't know. There's like. That's, that's it, Secret Sue. But her little friend right up here is no longer with us. And only one half of the glasses are. So, that's Secret Sue. Then, the last of the paper dolls, we've got Gretchen! Gretchen. She's a nine and a half inch paper doll. Her 48 piece wardrobe is flocked in cherry red. Clothes punch out, no scissors necessary. Also made by good old Whitman. Gretchen. And I, Gretchen's pretty fabulous. I looked through Gretchen before I bought her. But here is Gretchen. Here I am. I am Gretchen. And she's um like a really thick cardboard. Oh, and she even says she's Gretchen. <coughs> the amazing thing about Gretchen, like the box says, is all of the pink well, it says cherry red, but to me, it's like fuchsia pink. It's flocked. Like every little bit, that's flocked. Those are flocked. The little tiger is flocked. This is amazing. And it is just full. And she also has her stand. 
Oh, wait, there's another doll in here. Well, there's two Gretchens. Two for the price of one, two Gretchens. Well, wow. So maybe they just combine. Maybe there's double of everything. Maybe somebody had two Gretchens. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing two stands. But maybe it's in here somewhere because there is a massive amount of items in here. But very fun. And I love that it's all flocked. So you get two Gretchens. But I think only one stand and just a massive amount of flocked, flocked clothing. Wait, what's this? Look at Gretchen's. She can, she's, she's, she's styling. There you go. Two Gretchen's. That is Gretchen's paper dolls. So I thought that was pretty fun. I love that it's flocked. I've not seen those before. All right, and then the last thing is this. Now, I did pay, I paid $12 for this scrapbook. Here it is. And I'm not quite sure. I, I've done pretty well with scrapbooks, and I think we all kind of like these because it's kind of a glimpse in somebody else's past life. This is, on the top, it does have a little bit of the provenance on whose this was, but it's John J. Betty, um, Joan Botman, their semester in Greece, spring 1972, January 22nd through April 24th. So this is from the 70s, 1972 to be exact, but it is their trip to Greece. The thing that I liked about it is there's all of these, um, some of the provenance of, and it's all typed. The hustle and bustle of last minute getting ready. Then goodbyes to the two grandmas and to gra grandpas and to grandma. Mr. Swanson drove us to Indianapolis where we all took the plane to Chicago. There were there was a long hard wait in the airport due to a Canadian air control watcher strike. But we finally boarded the L Lufthansa plane. And so off we flew. John, daddy, mother, and 31 of our students. That was on January 22nd, 1972. So every, now some of the pages are coming out, but every page has a postcard and then like the, the stories. This is some of the things that I really, that drew me to this scrapbook was things like this. Well, here's the picture. Okay. It's a drawn out picture, but it says, a drawing by John C. of our apartment with our balcony and John C. out on the balcony. So here he is. Here's little John C. So this stage of his development when he was when he was writing, very early in the, the, the early stages of writing development because he just has a face with his arms and legs coming out of his head. So it's very early in like a preschooler's um, stage of a development as far as their their writing stages so um but then it says first we all went to the bank met lots of our students there jc got a comic book and sat and read this while business was transacted i just i don't know i just i loved that this was a middle school trip apparently gosh to greece um and then there's pages like this again with um Everything all typed up, but this says family of the Baumans. And then it has just like little notes and stuff on this envelope. It's just nicely done. And it's sad. And I know someone's going to comment, you should try to find the family. I'm not. I'm not going to try to find the family. Um, if the family still wanted it, the family would probably still have this in their possession. So... But then there's place there's little pictures like John C and mother shopping. So it has these hand drawn pictures, and I don't know. It, it's just great. I love that this person was just had such great detail. There's also some cards in here. Um, J C got two Valentines for breakfast, and she put them in here. J C was their little boy. So it's just, it's chock full. Now I will say the thing that makes me, you know, they're like family photos have been removed. 
So there aren't any like personal family photos. It's just their trip and there's receipts in here and stamps. And I mean, it's just such nice. It's nicely done. Receipts to the Caro Tower and um, maps, programs. What's this? This is loose in there. Let's find out what this is. A drawing by, yeah, John. Look at little baby John. What did, what did you draw, John? Those are, now she dictated. Those are camels from Egypt. There are pyramids and there's a sphinx. Well, maybe she didn't dictate this because I don't know that John would say sphinx, but. John rode a camel. The city is called Cairo. There is a nice hotel that John stayed at. The pyramids are big. The Sphinx was long. The Sphinx has two front paws. John climbed on and off the Sphinx. The city of Cairo is big. When John gets up on the camel, it felt like falling off a cliff. The camel made a rah, rah, rah. Did, and so did John John. Didn't like it very much. That's just... So, the American University in Cairo... And they've got, like, their schedule. And, I don't know. It's just, it's fun. You can, like, just be, you can be on the trip with these people. Because it's all typed out. Like, their whole journey. It's remarkable. And then she's got some um, postcards in the back that were sent to her from her students that she took on the trip. So, it's amazing. And I know that's not for everybody, but I like stuff like that. So that is the haul. Um, again, it was a little bit of, th most of it was things that I got from Riverside, but some of it was a few things. The, well, basically, just the encyclopedias were the only thing that I didn't get from Riverside. So it was an amazing haul, and I think it was great. This was 51 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here because it's quite long enough. Um, I know that, that people do look forward to the what sold on eBay videos. So I'm going to try hopefully to get better about that. It's just been a couple, a weird couple weeks with us traveling and then me getting this horrible respiratory infection. So I'm still recuperating from that and trying to get back into the swing of things. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for coming to my sales. I appreciate you. I appreciate you um, allowing me to do what I love to do so much. So thank you. I hope that you are subscribed. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. I do have live sales every Tuesday and Wednesday at one o'clock Eastern right here on my YouTube channel. I do also have some live sales every once in a while on Facebook. So make sure that you're following me on Facebook and Instagram. And I also have a Facebook group. Um, that is just a show and tell group where you can show some of your finds or show some of the ways that you find, you display some of your treasures in your home. So I hope that you'll join me over there. And that was it. That was the, that was the vlog video of the day. They're always a little different. You, you just never know. I don't know what I'm going to do and when I'm going to film until I wake up or when I get here. So it is, this is what it was today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye, guys. Red hot mama, red hot mama, you're the one we need. Red hot mama, some charmer, yes, indeed. You say that I should be in the follies, hot tamales. You say that I got a pair of eyes just like old Spangalies. I confess that I possess the sweetest charms in town.